Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And let's talk about a, a subject that's probably a bit contentious. And that's the idea of fitting a, a rod action to our style of casting. Frankly, I think in most situations that's nonsense, <laughs> to put it bluntly. I think anybody can learn to cast any fly rod over reasonable distances in normal fishing situations for trout, smallmouth bass, pike, whatever. Uh, and I think really it only becomes a factor when you're going uh, at the extremes of casting, whether it be distance, accuracy, handling wind, size of flies, whatever. The, if you're getting up into the extremes, then yeah, I can buy it because I've, I've experienced it where there's one rod action just doesn't work for me for distance. So could I learn to cast that rod for distance? The answer is probably yes. If I went to a, a casting instructor who was experienced in that rod action and casting it in salt water conditions, they probably could tweak my casting to allow me to cast it better. But uh, the reality is you get to a point of diminishing returns. So once you get to the extremes, yeah, I kind of buy the argument. But if you're not at the extremes, you should be able to cast anything. So let's talk about four rods that I've owned. Three are Loomis and one's called a Frontier, which was made by the Loomis factory in Mount Hope, Ontario. And it was, I think it was made on old Loomis blanks. So it's a Loomis rod too. Let's start with the Frontier. It's about uh, 25 years ago, roughly. I had that rod. I cast it 110 feet measured in the park with a fluffy on the end, but I was working my butt off to do it. Comfortable range for that rod while fishing was around 70, 75, 80 feet. That would be about my maximum with the fly on the end in typical fishing situations. Okay, uh, 15, 18 years later, I get uh, Loomis Pro 4X, 9 foot 9 weight. And uh, well, I had a, a casting like a fishing god day in Cape Cod, and my maximum cast was about 110. Uh, I know that because my line was 120 foot long, plus I got eight or nine foot a liter, and there was hardly any line left on the reel. I was getting close to the backing knot. So, you know, say conservatively 110, maybe even 115. All, all my casts are doing 100 plus that day, and there's this fish that I got on a cast that was over 100 feet. And there was a trench out there. If you didn't reach the trench, you weren't getting a big one. And I got the big one. So it, it got me a fish because I could cast that far. The uh, NRX rod that I got a little later on, I couldn't get past 90 feet with that rod. Now, what's interesting, my comfortable casting dis distance when fishing was 80 to 90 feet. But if I, and that's where the fly on the end, wind, everything else, standing, you know, ass deep in water, I could get 80, 90 feet, no trouble, easy peasy. And it's like he hit a wall at 90 feet. I couldn't get beyond it. And yes, the rod had more distance in it. Definitely had more distance in it. I couldn't get it out of it. And even in the yard with the fluffy, forget it. Okay. And uh, now I've got an NRX plus and 90 to 100 feet in the, in the schoolyard is easy peasy. I haven't tried the maximum distance yet with it. I haven't gone out and tried that yet, but 90, 100 feet. Pff, I know that once I get on the water, 90 plus is going to be easy. So what is the difference between these four rods? So before we get into that, it isn't the line. I'm working with this uh, uh, Airflow 40 plus cold water salt line on three of those rods. And the fourth one was also an Airflow uh, intermediate line. So all of them, all these distances I'm talking about are done with the Airflow intermediate lines. Three with this line, four, uh, the fourth one, the Frontier, was done with a, a different uh, Airflow intermediate. So I'm working with basically the same lines on the, on the nine foot nine weight. And, uh, you know, it's not a line issue. So it was the rod action. So this NRX Plus here, it bends right to the cork. Now, it doesn't bend very much. It's a stiff rod, but it bends to the cork. And the reason why I can do that is because the tip section here is relatively strong and thick. I thought thick, sorry, strong and stiff. And so what happens is when you're casting, this stiff, strong tip drives the load into the butt section of the rod and allows you to get power out of the butt section of the rod relatively easily. 
my Pro 4X on my Frontier were done the same way. Stiff tip drives the action into the butt. The NRX, however, it was slightly softer tip. Not a lot softer, just slightly softer. And so I found it difficult to get into the butt of the rod. I can get about two thirds of the way down and then I really couldn't get much after that. So as a consequence, I was not tapping the power of the rod that was in the butt because my casting style didn't allow me to get there. All right. Now, could I have learned to do that? Yes. If I'd gone to a qualified instructor who was familiar with casting rods with that kind of action, yeah, no trouble. Uh, I'm sure the, the casting instructor would have been able to tweak my casting to the point where I could start to get past 90 feet with that rod. Would it have been worth it? Well, you get to the point of diminishing returns, especially when you're 70 years old like me. What are you going to do, uh, you know, to get pa how much effort you're going to put in to get it, uh, getting beyond that? It's easier for me to get a more progressive action rod that I find easier to cast for distance. So the bottom line here is, no matter what the rod action is, we can be taught or we can teach ourselves to cast it. And you, and before you sell that rod that you hate because you can't cast it, you know, maybe spend some time with an instructor or even a friend and just spend some time working with it. Because what often happens is if you're willing to spend some time learning how to cast that rod, you A, become a better caster, and B, you may end up loving the rod. It may be your favorite rod by the time you're done. So it's worth spending some time with the rod before you give up on it. And it means you have to approach the rod with a different mentality. Uh, whatever you're doing with it right now doesn't work. So you have to change what you're doing, which in many cases means just slowing down. You know, turning your head, watching your back cast, slowing down. All of a sudden you'll be able to cast that rod. As I say, it could end up being your favorite rod. So the bottom line here about this video is if you have a rod that you hate and that you want to get rid of or certain kinds of actions you hate and you can't cast them, it's not the rod, it's not the line, it's us. And what we have to do is learn to cast that action of rod. And when we do, you know, we, we end up gaining skills, we end up being a better caster, and we may end up loving that rod. So don't sell it, you know, learn to cast it. And, uh, you know, except when we get near the extremes where, yeah, maybe you're better off with a rod that you find easy to cast. Uh, other than that, I don't think any uh, rod action is beyond your ability to learn to cast. So keep that in mind. Cheers.